It is 7.30 a.m. June 1st and as far as I am informed, macrame is still trendy. All of that being said, it's time to make a summer bag, but first coffee. Before we get started, here is a few tips for you. Tip number one, pre-cut all your quartz. You will thank yourself later, I promise you. Tip number two, if you have such possibility, cut your quartz outside on a balcony or in your garden. You will just avoid these tiny particles of fiber flying around in the air. And if you're allergic, like me, that's a very big plus. Tip number three, use sticker paper or washi tape to group your cords together by length. It helps a lot later when you start creating your project. I will go ahead and cut my cords and I will leave all necessary measurements for you in the next slide. First thing first, we will start with 190 cords. You should have 20 of those in total. For now, we will need just 8. Take a cord, fold it in half. Take one of your handles and attach your cord to the handle using the lark's head knot. Just like that. Repeat with seven more cords. Once you have all eight cords attached to your handle, pin it to the core port. Next, take another cord of the same length, fold it in half and pin it next to the row of cords that we have just attached. Take another cord and repeat the same step on the opposite side. Starting from the left side, make 5 square knots.
With the remaining 10 cords, repeat the same steps with the second handle. Once you get to making square knots on the second handle, there will be a slight difference. Your square knots need to be flipped vertically. For that, you need to start making the square knot from a different cord on top than you usually do. For example, I always start with the left cord on top and by doing that I reach the look of the square knot where the loop is on the right. So this time I will start with the right cord on top. And you can see that my knots are now reflected along the y-axis. So for one handle you will always start square knots from the left cord on top and for another handle you will start from the right cord. Once you unpin your handle, you can tighten up the cords that were added on the sides. And in general, it's sometimes easier to tighten up the knots while holding them in the air. Moving on to the next group of cords. You need four of those and for each handle we will add one on each side and then make a row of square knots. Like before, take a cord, fold it in half and pin it Try to align your cord with where the second layer of knots should start and repeat the same steps on the other side. And make six square knots in this row.
Repeat the same with the remaining two chords on the other handle. For the next five rows, the principle will stay the same. In each row, you will add four new chords, two for each handle, one on each side. With every next row, choose the longest of the chords remaining. So in row three, you will use 170 chords, in row four, you will use 160 chords, and so on. Complete five rows like that on your own, and I will meet you there. Completed five rows, and at this point, you should only have 120 centimeter long chords left. We will take four of those chords and extend the next row the same way like before. From the remaining 8 chords take 4, fold them in half and pin them down to the cork board. Make two square knots, one facing left and another one facing right.
lost a tiny bit of footage here, but I will try to explain what happened in the previous step. I pinned down two halves of my back and two square knots that I have just created in between them. Each knot repeats the pattern of the respective half of the back. With the remaining four cords I made two more square knots and repeated the steps on the opposite side of the back. Now that the two halves are connected I can continue making square knots in the following row. All the square knots on the left from the middle will be turned left and all the knots on the right from the middle will be turned right. However, every second row there will be an extra knot in between two knots in the middle and you can decide which direction it will face. I will make mine turn left and I will switch it up every two rows so that I get kind of a zigzag pattern in the end. Then I simply continue to fill out the square knots until I finish the row. And once the row is complete, I continue making rows of square knots until I run out of cord. So yesterday I have completed the main part of my bag. I made um, 20 of connected rows in total. This is how the side looks like. Now you need to choose which side will be your front side because we are going to work with the back side facing upwards. I quite like how this turned out, so I'm going to make this my front side. That means I need to turn my back inside out.
all right so now that it's turned inside out i'm going to put it aside and start making the bottom of the bag for the bottom part we will again need a cork board and pins and you should have four cords left two cords 180 centimeters long and two cords 120 centimeters long take two cords 180 centimeters each fold them in half and pin them to the board next to each other Next, take the 120 centimeter long cord and measure 30 centimeters on one end. Holding that place, fold the cord and pin it down so that the shorter tail is on the inside and the longer tail is on the outside. Repeat the same steps with the other cord. And again, pin it in a way that the shorter tail is on the inside. So now we have four cords and we are going to start by making two square knots next to each other. The direction of the square knots doesn't really matter this time since it's the bottom of the bag but you can pick whatever you like. Before you tighten your first square knot, loosen the top a bit so that once the knot is tied you have two little loops at the top. The outer one should be a bit bigger. Something like this. Repeat the same with the rest of the cords. Also leaving little loops at the top. In the next row you make a square knot connecting these two in the middle. Again, two square knots next to each other. Make sure you leave some space between square knots so that there is this tiny loop appearing on the side. Continue repeating this pattern until you have 10 more of these loops on the side.
I now have 11 loops in total on each side and to finish off the bottom of my bag I will now need some white thread and a needle. I'm going to trim the ends And what I want is to mirror the other side of the bottom. So I'm going to sew pairs of cords together to form loops. This is going to be on the inside of the bag, so it doesn't need to look pretty. Now it's time to connect the bottom of the bag to the main part. First thing first, find your middle knot. Each square knot will have four cords it consists of. For the middle knots only, we are going to split these cords into groups and one group will go through this loop over here and the remaining two cords will go through the loop on the right. Find the four cords of the neighboring knot. All four cords will go through the next loop on the right. Find the next four cords and thread them through the next loop. You basically just continue like that until you reach the middle knot which will split into these two loops.
once you're past the middle you simply continue on the other side the same way Once you are finished, it is time for one last row of square knots. Continue like if you would make a regular row of square knots. Make sure to pull the cords tight so that there is no gap in between the bottom and the main part of the back. Once the row is complete, you can trim the ends. If you want to secure your knots, you can go over them with a needle and a thread. Simply sewing through the connection points. Once you're finished, you simply turn your back inside out again. And now the back has a bit of volume to it. The last step is optional, but if you feel like it, you can decorate your bag, especially if you have some yarn leftovers in different colors. I noticed that the square knot pattern reminds a lot of the embroidery fabric. All you need to do is make cross stitches and create a pattern. This bag is not big enough for some more complicated designs, but you can add a fun touch to your bag. And there is she, the final result. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this project, chances are high you will be interested in other tutorials and inspiration on my channel. Less than 10% of people who watch this video are actually subscribed, so make sure you're not missing out on something that can be your next do-it-yourself project. Have fun and I hope to see you again next time.